Hi, my algorithm was called Kenny Edge Detection. Um, so, <clears throat> the Kenny Edge Detection is a multi-stage uh, detection operator used by a wide range of audience members to extract edges from an image. The operator was developed by John F. Kenny in 1986 and won rewards for its innovation in computer vision. As you can see on the right, there is an original image and CED ran on that image right below it. So, here's the concept uh, of, of this algorithm. So, the general criteria for an edge detection are as follows. One has to have a low error rate, which means that it has to be as accurate as possible. Two, the edge point accurately loca uh, localizes on the center of the edge. And three, the edges in the image should, be, should only be marked once. Finally, four, reduce as much noise as possible. Kenny approached these guidelines by using a calculus of variations, which is described as a sum of four exponential terms. Um, and the five-step process, one is apply a Gaussian filter to smooth out the image, which reduces noise. Two is to find uh, intensity gradients of the image, which basically says uh, asks for angle of each pixel. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, three is to apply a non-maximum suppression to get rid of all spurious response to the edge detection. Four is to apply a double threshold uh, to determine potential edges. And five is to track weight uh, edges by hysteresis. So, step one is Gaussian filter. So, an edge detection algorithm makes noise in sample images for true edges and classifies them as such. An important step to make um, to eliminate this noise is to use a Gaussian filter. A Gaussian filter uh, kernel is convoluted on an edge, on a, uh, uh, conv convoluted on an image, meaning that the picture is mapped from the tuple of the sequences into a sequence of tuples. Given that the kernel size is uh, 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. The equation is detailed below. So you have h of h of ij is 1 over 2 pi um, 2 pi uh, uh, sd squared and then uh, so and so. So basically I'll just summarize this math equation. Uh, Let's say you have a, a kernel is like a three by. Let's say a kernel is three by three, right? It gets mapped over uh, each pixel, and multiple. And each each kernel has specific values in um, in each uh, grid in each uh, cell inside the three by three. And so that gets multiplied onto the di onto the uh, pixel that it's overlaid on. And then uh, this basically just adds them all together. And divides by how many there are, basically getting the mean, and that mean gets overrided on each value, and this is overrided on a different image, so that mathematic, uh, so it doesn't ruin the math. Uh, so these i and j right here, these are iterators, and the size of kernel is inversely proportional to the sensitivity to noise and localization error. So step two is intensity gradients. To find the intensity gradient means to detect an edge direction. Uh, it, these directions can, can include are, are, are horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. Sobel, the operator used by CED, searches for maximum, minimum, and, f and in the first derivative of the image to find the absolute gradient of the image at each point in a black and white image. This is accomplished with kernels for an x and y direction. Given that A is the sample image it, and G, X, and y, G, Y are images containing the horizontal and vertical derivative approximations respectively the following is done so these are the these are the small kernels I was talking about um, obviously it's a little bit different than the um, uh, than the Gaussian kernels um, but these are mapped uh, and basically they're trying to determine the direction so a is pop is the value uh, uh, is like the pixel pixel value and basically this is ran on every single pixel and since g g of x and g of y oh that should say y uh g, g of x and g of y can be negative you have to the magnitude has to be positive so you have to you have to, it's like a squared plus b squared plus c squared so this is what we do with uh find the find the magnitude g and then to find the direction of the pixel you have to do arc tan of g y over uh, g x which basically gives us um well in radians or in degrees uh what direction the pixel is facing and that should so uh, a pixel can be or uh like not not a pixel um angle but where like a line might be angled to. so it could be straight or it could be like horizontal or uh, horizontal or diagonal and so uh, it uses these kernels to detect such so 
So step three is non-maximum suppression. One notable feature on the CED is its step to get a pixel width edges, which are accomplished using non-maximum suppression. Iterating through the directional matrices, the process does the following. One, it compares the edge strength of the current pixel with the edge strength of the pixel in the respective direction. If the edge strength of the current pixel is a local maxima within the mask of the same direction, the value will be preserved. Otherwise, the value is suppressed. Basically, inside a mask, you can see it in this kernel, um, it takes the local maxima and, and makes that, like, it, it, it will be preserved. But all the other ones will be suppressed and equal to zero. Uh, it's, based, it's just suppression of the non-maximum values. So, step four is double threshold. The remaining image consists of a mix of main edges that are desirable and edge pixels caused by noise and color variation. In order to achieve a concentrated percentage of edges that we want, filtering out weak gradient value pic uh, edge pixels and preserving strong edge pixels is a must. This is practiced with high and low threshold values. Values that land between the min and max uh, are labeled high and low threshold values. Values that land between... Uh, uh, Values that land between min and max are labeled as weak edge pixels, while those fa that fall under the min uh, minimum value are suppressed. So, um, as you can see here, obviously values that go above the max valuation are going to be considered real edges. Those are the edges that are, that we know uh, should be there. Um, and so, ones that fall below the minimum should be should obviously be cut out. But things that go in between uh, should be kept in consideration for later. And so. Uh, that consideration is done at the fifth step, which is hysteresis. Uh, the fifth and final step is to track edges uh, with this process, um, and it was made to complement the previous step. Double thresholding. If you recall just a few moments ago, I, uh, I mentioned that weak, pi weak, ed weak edge pixels are kept in consideration. The optimal result is carried by out by not removing all uh, weak edge pixels, but by looking if to see if any strong edges are also nearby. Blob analysis is, is used on each weak pi uh, pixel and its eight neighboring pixels. If at least one strong pixel is touching the blob, the weak pixel will be included in the finished work. So let's say that this red uh, red grid, uh, uh, red square inside the grid is uh, your selected pixel. Then the eight, um, if any of the eight touching uh, are considered a strong edge value, then it will be cons it will be included in the final result. So. <clears throat> That's basically all those five steps basically summarize CED. Now, here's a comparison model to uh, best, ex to best uh, describe what, it's, uh, what, it's, what CED is like. So, <clears throat> the easy example uh, of how you can compare CED to daily life is on graphics editor software like Paint.net or Photoshop. Gaussian blur in both programs, which do exactly what CED does, smooth out images. So, those eliminate noise and uh, provide like a basic overlay on detailed uh, areas of the image. So finding intensity gradient uh, used in the background for other tasks such as reduce, reducing motion blur. So uh, it's not re usually found uh, as a tool by itself but used uh, for other tasks. Uh, the next three processes are used all together including Gaussian blur and intensity gradient or partitioning up images. For paint.net, there's the magic wand, uh, which basically uses edge detection algorithm to define the edges and then selects an area of the image that is fully enclosed by those edges. Um, it also has a tolerance component, which acts, the, which acts like the min and max values and double threshold. So an application that you could use a CED for is to uh, improve edge detection, uh, which is used for image segmentation and data data extraction. So CED manages to cover the three criteria of the edge detector. It's a relatively simple process. Other uh, algorithms like Sobel method and Laplacian do not offer uh, a better result. Uh, a big reason why Candy Edge is able to perform better is because it has a one pixel width um, edge, which makes uh, the image uh, more sharper and uh, uh, result sharper and more accurate. So as you can see, here's the original image and these are the uh, other four processes, or other three processes, and, and then Candy Edge. So there are some limitations to CED. Um, one is the fact that Gaussian filter smooths out edges that we want, increasing the probability of missing weak edges. The more complex an image gets, the more different threshold values are needed for different local areas on the picture. Global, thresh, global threshold values are 
made manually through trial and error, leading to an increase in calculation complexity, uh, complexity with more and more images. CD cannot uh, reach a satisfactory uh, uh, high accuracy of single response for each edge. It's bound to have multiple point responses, which uh, increases uh, edge thickness and uh, increases error.